Welcome back, everybody, to the Western Carolina Catamounts Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14 for the Franchise Gurus channel. Last episode, uh, we played our inaugural game against South Carolina, and it was surprisingly close. I was expecting to lose by maybe 28. We lost by 3. 17 to 14, so I'm happy with the way the team played. The offense played well in the fourth quarter. The defense was really good throughout that whole game, and we really shut down their offense. It's just that our offense was not able to put up enough points late. So here's a little recruiting update. As I mentioned, uh, we do have restrictions. We can only get two three stars, eight two stars, and as many one stars as we want until we go up in prestige, and then the restrictions change. And then once we hit a, a six-star prestige, which is the max level, there are no restrictions. So uh, one of the three stars we're going after is Terrell Horton, a quarterback. By the way, we're not allowed to scout. The CPU, of course, scouted everybody by like 25 points. I didn't do that. Uh, but Terrell Horton, 71 overall. If we get him, which it looks like we will, he'll probably be the starter next season. Or maybe we redshirt him for a season and then he becomes the starter. So Terrell Horton, get used to that name. The other three-star we're going after is Joe Johnson, an athlete. He doesn't really have a set position, I don't think, but he does have great athletic traits and measurables. Uh, Old Dominion's currently winning in that battle, so that one might be a tough one. Offensive tackle, Jason D. Angeles. Angelis, I don't know. We should get him. We're, we're going to offer him a visit for this week. And then here's a look at the other two stars. We're doing really good with most of them, and then the one stars as well. So there are a bunch of guys who I think can make an impact on this team. A lot of these players are raw and not very good. But to be fair, this roster isn't very good to begin with. So these guys will certainly make big impacts for the squad. And now we get into the home opener here for Western Carolina Catamounts. They're going to be taking on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Also the first game in conference play as the Catamounts are part of the American Athletic Conference. So let's get the show underway here at E.J. Whitmore Stadium as the Cincinnati Bearcats, who set a record of 1-1, one one, will be taking on the 0-1 Western Carolina Catamounts. As Cincinnati chooses tails, tails never fails for us in this case. It does land on heads. And Western Carolina will choose to send their defense out on the field first. So here's the Cincinnati offense. Hand off to the star running back, Michael Warren, the second, gaining 11. Tough run right there. And we saw a bunch of tough runs on this drive for Cincinnati. There's a nice touchdown from uh, Jared Dokes. And the Bearcats are on the board as it's now 7-0. Here comes Jack Jackson and the Catamount offense. First down. He's going to get it up the middle for Donye Bonner. Bonner's dropped a few too many passes this year, but I think he can also say that about the rest of the receiving court. And then here's Tevante Ingram with a nice run. Ingram only had 10 carries for 25 yards last week, and he actually missed the entire second half of that game with an injury. A few plays later, first down. There's Jackson. He's actually going to be sacked, losing about five yards. Nice play for Dorian Holloway, now second and 15. Here's Jack Jackson. He gets Tevante Ingram open on the wheel route, and that'll bring you inside the five-yard line. The Catamounts with a prime opportunity to score as Jackson heaves it up, hoping he gets lucky. And Laxton Holloway, the star receiver, will start considering the rest of the town on the team, will come down with the touchdown, tying the game up at seven. As here's Michael Warren, another tough run. Now, a few plays later, back to Warren. This play, he's going to lose three, courteous of the senior defensive end, Ambrose McCorkle. That's a very fun name to say. Next play, second and 13. Five wide set here for the Bearcats. As here's Ryder. Short pass over to Cloud. Cloud's going to break the tackle, gets by another one, shrugs the play from Zaire Nash, and will be brought down at the one. So now the Bearcats just need to punch it in to regain the lead first and goal at the one they would do just that as Ryder keeps himself on the option and Desmond Ryder will find the end zone Cincinnati now up 14 to 7 so both offenses are playing really well which is interesting because in the South Carolina game that one was dominated by defense here's Jackson finding Laxton Holloway wide open up the middle the corner just decided to stop covering him for whatever reason now from about the 15, Jackson on second down, looking for the tight end, but instead, the pass is going to be picked off 
you can't spell intercepted without the D. That was Jeffries making the play. Bearcats have it back. Ryder with a nice pass over to Smith. And Blue Smith gets the nice first down. I wish my name was Blue. Anyway, a few plays later, here's Geddes with another nice first down. Thomas Geddes with a nice gain. And Cincinnati, who's really put an emphasis on running the ball, is now doing a nice job of passing the ball here on this possession. As a few plays later, here's Desmond Ryder on first down. Short pass over to Josiah Deguera, who fumbles it. It would be recovered by Cincinnati. Massive break for them. Deguera has a chance to be drafted into the NFL this upcoming draft, likely as a day three selection. Maybe he can try to perform well in a weak tight end class. And then there's Cloud finding the end zone. Trent Cloud will make it a two-score lead here for Cincinnati as we near the end of the first half. 21-7, your score. Catamounts do start the second half with the ball, but that's not really going to mean a whole lot as Jack Jackson gets sacked. Ensuing Cincinnati possession! The corner, Deshaun Baxton, comes in with the interception. Baxton had a pick last week against South Carolina, so this is his second. Western Carolina gets it, and Barry would do nothing on their drive as Jackson would be sacked, and we advance now to the second half, third and seven. Short pass from the tight end, Jacob Hill, who only gained six, so fourth and one. The Catamounts have nothing to lose. Might as well go for it, and Tevante Ingram is able to gain two and the first down, keeping the chains moving. Now here's Jackson on first down, scrambling like he's late on a date, trying to get it to the open man, and he connects with his tight end, Jacob Hill, once again, Hill does not want to be brought down, and he's going to fight for a few extra yards. Really nice play by the young freshman tight end who's been this team's, I would say, top offensive playmaker, to be honest. So quite the future this team has with a Jacob Hill. Another fourth and short. Western Carolina going to go for it. They do not convert as the pass was broken up. Donye Bonner, the intended receiver. Cincinnati gets it back. Look at Michael Warren. With a really nice run, he jumps over DeAndre Cooper and is brought down inside the 20 by the cornerback, Kareem Yu. Now from about the three, Bearcats going to try to punch it in here. And that they would do is Dokes with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And Cincinnati now with a comfortable 28-7 lead. Next Bearcat possession, here is Ryder. Has plenty of time. He connects with Jackson, who is pushed out, but still a nice game for Jay Sean Jackson. Now a third and 25. Cincinnati's been perfect on third down today, and that they would uh, keep as another third down conversion. That is Javon Hawes with the first down, and now the Bearcats should be able to punch it in inside the red zone as once again Javon Hawes with the catch and the score, and just like that, Cincinnati now up by 28 points. Ouch. Not looking good here for Vicata Mounts now in the fourth quarter. Just playing for pride at this point. Another fourth down. Jackson's pass is going to get picked off by Wright. He sort of forced the pass. He didn't really have much of a choice, so you can't really blame Jack for that throw. Bearcats now trying to choose some clock. Second and eight. What a play from Clegg, the linebacker, coming in immediately. There is a hole between the center and the right guard. And he capitalized, immediately getting to the backfield, tackling Ryder before he could hand it off to the running back. Third down now. There is Smith with the touchdown. Blue Smith gets the score. Kareem Yu was trying to go for the interception, and he was a little bit too aggressive. He literally just stopped trying to go for the ball, and that would be a touchdown. So Western Carolina is now down by 35. They don't really have much of a shot here. Jackson is sacked again. Now second and 20. Jake, or Jack Jackson... He is just pushed down. He was really stumbling since the start of that play and could not cover. So now it's third and 27. He says, screw it. And why not let it fly? And Josh Allison, the freshman, will come down with it and take it to the house. And the Catamounts will make this game a little bit closer. 94-yard touchdown from Jackson. And now it's 42-14. So you'd figure the game is over. Cincinnati might run another play, go for the kneel down. And that they would do, but Michael Warren is going to show off his inner Marshawn Lynch on this play. He was tackled, but he was on top of one of the Catamount defenders, which means he wasn't down. He got back up, and he's going to take it the distance for a Cincinnati touchdown, putting the icing on the cupcake and the money in the grave. 
That's how this game ends, pretty much. Currently 49 to 14. Time is expiring. This will be the last play of the game. Jackson once again figures, why not let it fly? Donye Bonner with the catch, and he would be tracked down at about the 11. So maybe Western Carolina should run these four verts more often. Maybe we should just cheese uh, NCAA the whole game. But that's how this one would end. 49 to 14, dominant win for Cincinnati. Coach Alex Ellis and the crew were unable to get it done. I can't think of a time in Alex Ellis's playing days back when he was with Westlake uh, where the team started this bad so soon, already 0-2. Now, obviously, this roster is absolutely terrible. You have to keep that in mind, and it showed today here against Cincinnati. Uh, unlike last week, the defense was an utter train wreck after a really good performance in the game against South Carolina. The offense, once again, showed flashes, especially late, but... Obviously, too little too late, especially in this game, considering the Catamounts lost by 35. So we're not going to play every game in this series. I would do a little bit of simulating. I simulated the next game, which happened to be against the number five ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. And it went about how you would imagine it, 48 to 10. Honestly, I'm a little bit surprised they didn't beat us by more, to be honest. Looks like Justin Fields didn't even play for them as Chuganov was the quarterback. Here's a look at the numbers. No one really played outstanding, which is to be expected, but it looks like the team didn't play that much worse than they did against Cincinnati, so I suppose that's good, or maybe that just shows how badly we got beaten against Cincinnati. So that puts Western Carolina Catamounts at 0-3, not playing good football this first season, which is to be expected, and then uh, who would you guys rather see next episode, either Temple or number 17 ranked Virginia. Let us know in the comments. Have a good day. Peace out.